What a time to be alive, fantasy hockey fans. We got spicy games coming out the gate every single night and every single day. You have Steele and I here to wrap it up all for you on the Fantasy Hockey Podcast on the Locked On Sports Network. Thank you for joining us for today's episode. Let's get right to it. You're Locked On Fantasy Hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everybody? And thank you so much for tuning in to the Wednesday edition of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. And thank you for making us your first listen every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty bucks off your first purchase. Steal. I am so jazzed up right now, just in general, <laughs> with what's going on in the first night of the NHL playoffs, which is what we're going to talk about on today's episode. And people, by the way, we see you out there in the comments and in the DMs hitting us with that love. I get so fired up when I see someone say they finished in first place deal <laughs> with some help from you and I during this season. And that's why we do this. So a sidebar quick, much love to all the supporters. But we're here every single day and we're going to try and recap a little bit. I think steel what we saw some of our key takeaways on every single episode. And so. I think there was a lot to see in the game ones from what we had Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night. Oh, my goodness. I just can't wait. But (laughs) let's get to it. We got big time bets at the end of the episode. Where do you want to start today's conversation? Because I just have a feeling we're in for a beauty of a first couple of weeks here. Let's start with the first game to take place Monday, uh, Monday night. That's the New York Islanders and the Carolina Hurricanes. And I'm very excited to talk about all four of those matchups from Monday. Mm. But yeah, let's start with the New York Islanders and the Carolina Hurricanes. We knew yeah. this was going to be a low scoring game. And that's exactly what we got. Some of the two most stingiest defensive teams in the league. And that's exactly what we got in game one of the first round series. But I have three takeaways uh, from game one so far. Wow. First one, Elias Sororkin was absolutely amazing. Two goals against a 946 save percentage. He made some really athletic saves down the stretch, especially in the last five minutes of the third period to keep the Islanders in the game and try to even tie it up to force overtime. And those two goals from the Carolina Hurricanes, they weren't even his fault. Both come on the power play, and it's exactly how the coaching staff drew it up. Quick draws, win the offensive draw, back to the point, and quickly set up your power play and get it over to Sebastian Ajo with the first goal of the game. So can't even blame Sororkin for that. He mm. played great. The second takeaway is Auntie Ranta was really good. And I understand why Brenda Moore, okay. I understand Brenda Moore's decision to start with Auntie Ranta over okay. Frederick Anderson. He was 19, three and three in the regular season, a nine, 10, a nine, 10 save percentage. He was really, really good down the stretch, especially when Anderson was injured and Kochetkov wasn't playing great either. The thing about it, though, was Auntie Ranta didn't really face any grade-A chances. The Islanders didn't get a ton of opportunities in the slot or with high-scoring opportunities, so that was their own fault. And the third takeaway, which is the most crucial takeaway of this series so far, is the Islanders' power play still stinks. It is garbage on the special teams, especially on the power play. That might be the most important takeaway for me, Steele. It it is the most important takeaway, and that's why I I left it for the last one here. I like that. 0 for 4 on the power play for the New York Islanders. And we knew that the special teams was going to be the difference maker in this matchup. Hurricanes go 2 for 4. They make quick work on the power play. Islanders go 0 for 4. uh, One of the worst power plays in the regular season. And we both, Mm. uh, we we know both teams don't score a ton of goals 5 on 5. So the the special teams, especially the power play, is going to be the difference maker. It's funny how we were very concerned about the Carolina Hurricanes' ability to not score goals, and I know it was a 2-1 final, and just all of a sudden, you know, my first takeaway is the Islanders are in trouble if they don't find someone. And I think they might just need one piece to really find it offensively, Steel. Is it Brock Nelson? Is it Bo Horvat? I don't know. But all of a sudden, I just, this team is what they are. Defense first, goalie first, but they are going to have to find some offensive magic at some point. And again, two goals, Aho, okay, I get it. 
my second takeaway, Brent Burns still got it, baby. <laughs> yeah. He is magic. I think he had the two assi- – he assisted on both goals. Yes. He looked really confident. This guy has now been – you know, on the San Jose shark side of things for so long, and you insert him right into this uh, Carolina Hurricanes playoff push, Mm -hmm. this could be one of those moves that we look back on as uh, if they go on a run. Brent Burns, I feel, is going to be a huge part of it. I think also the anti-Ranta situation, like putting him out there, good for Rod Brindamore and having confidence in his quote-unquote backup goalie. That's one of those coaching moves that – you know, we don't talk a lot about coaches on this show, Steel, but I think that's hats off to coach there and on a vibe. And I, I don't think there's anything wrong, really, with Frederick Anderson unless we're missing something here. So no. good for coach on that. The Isles are going to need to find that offense in quick. If you're okay with it, I want to save your full take for Minnesota Dallas <laughs> after the break. So why don't we just get to, I think, which was the most snoozing game of Monday evening. Yeah. Between Austin and Florida. We'll get there quick. We'll hit the break and then we'll come back because, you know, I got a couple of takes on this Edmonton Oilers game one performance. You're going to have some on the uh, Minnesota wild side of things, but yeah. What else can we say about the Boston Bruins? Bergeron, sick, half the team battling illness, and they come out and they just smother the Florida Panthers. And I have this in my notes as one of the takeaways. I don't know if you saw Kachuk, uh, Matthew Kachuk's quote. They're going to need to play almost perfect hockey to even think about winning this series. And I think that's all we need to say <laughs> there because the key pieces perform and – the Bruins do their thing and get the first game win. I just think the Florida Panthers are in real trouble here. I said they're going to get two games. I think I'm going to be wrong about that one, Steel. Look, Matthew Kachuk is right. They have to be perfect from here on out. They cannot have any more mistakes. And this is exactly the type of series I saw between the Boston Bruins and Florida Panthers. Low scoring, a little bit chippy. But nonetheless, mm. the Bruins just hand you know very easily handling the Florida Panthers in this first round. Either five games or six games. I think the Florida Panthers can at, at least get one when it goes okay. back to Florida. But Oof. nonetheless, Bruins will still win this. I just want to say David Pasternak is still yeah. that guy. He yeah. is that guy in the postseason, scoring the first goal. He Secondly, on guy. top of that, I know he doesn't have a ton of experience in the NHL, just not the postseason, the postseason as well. But Alex Lyon was absolutely incredible last night as well. Robbed, robbed. Good for him. He robbed Frederick multiple times. I think he stood on his head. He gave the the Florida Panthers a a chance to stay in the game and win the game. But unfortunately enough, it wasn't wasn't enough uh, Mm. uh, for the the Florida Panthers and Alex Lyon. But I had to give some shout. I had to give a shout out to him. Love that. He really did play well. Man, this is just some of the things, like, not even in hockey, just in sports. A guy just comes out of nowhere. All over the all over the North American circuit when it comes to playing professional hockey. Ah, the man. I, I want to see him win one game steal. Yeah. You know, just to get one years old, me. too. Like, it's incredible. Just such a good story. Hey, Disney Plus, maybe pick this bad boy up. <laughs> but we're going to come back after the break. We got to talk Minnesota Wild, Dallas Stars. What a slobber knocker of a game. <laughs> Another OT game, Edmonton Oilers, LA Kings. Bunch of pundits, prognostication seal. Might go out the window if those LA Kings can pop two on the road. We're going to talk all about it right after we talk about game time. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. You don't want to be stressed out when you go to buy tickets for your favorite event. It can be hectic. It can be stressful. And that's why you go to the Game Time app. Steals use it a bunch. I'm starting to use it. It is one of the best and easiest ways to get tickets to all of your favorite events. And I mean sports, music, comedy, theater events. With killer deals on last-minute tickets and the best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over tickets and start getting hype for all the fun you should be having. And that's with Game Time. Don't plan months in advance. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event and get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and even more. Make sure you snag your tickets without the stress with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, use code locked on NHL for 20 $20 off your first purchase. 
Terms apply. Again, do you need to be checking out Game Time, people? Steel and I love this app. It's super easy to use, and it'll get you to all your events a lot faster. Create an account today. Redeem code Locked On NHL for twenty bucks off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed with Game Time. Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Don't forget, we are free and available on your favorite podcast platform, including YouTube. So make sure you hit the subscribe, hit the follow button. We appreciate all the love, all the support. And make sure you're tuning in the rest of the week. And for that matter, the rest of the playoffs. Flip and I are coming in with all the hot content in the postseason. With that being said, a lot of hot starts uh, to start the playoffs as well. Edmonton Oilers and the LA Kings. The Kings shocked the world last hey. or a few nights ago hey. and take game one. We will Woo. get to that. Woo. Do you want to start off with the Edmonton Oilers and Kings game, or should we start off with the Wild and Stars? I, I want to start off with the Stars and Wild. Let's leave the Edmonton Oilers because I think that was – as much as it was absolutely huge for the Minnesota Wild to get a game one, and there was a lot of really intriguing things that I want to talk about with you about that, which let's start with. This Edmonton Oilers game was another <laughs> shock. So let's leave that to the end if you're okay with it. Hit me with what you saw in that Minnesota Wild-Dallas game, and maybe hit me is where we should start with that Dumba hit. Yeah, look, there is a lot to unpack in this game. First off, what a way to start off the, the, the postseason Yes. For Minnesota Wild and Dallas Stars double yes. overtime yes. to start the series. That's exactly what we want to see here yeah. uh, as hockey fans on the podcast. More hockey, more love out there. So absolutely great way to start the series. Also, before we get to the hit, I have to give a shout out to the Ooh. boy on the blue line, Brock Whoa. Faber. Third Whoa. NHL game, first playoff game. Absolutely made a game saver on Mason Marchman. Game who had favor? In that game oh, yeah, favor. No, bad, I love that. Bad. I love that. But I have to give a shout out to Brock Favor because he saved the game for the Minnesota Wild as he well uh, on did. a Mason Marchman empty empty netter. So yes. I had to shout out him. But overall, uh. you know, I'll, I'll get to the injury. I'll get to the Matt Dumba hit. But yeah. I thought Minnesota started very, very strong in the first period, especially on, on a road game in game one. They came okay. out very strong, very fast. And they stuck to their game plan. But again, once that injury occurred to Pavelski, and I'll get more in depth with it later, the Dallas Stars really rallied after that incident. They, they, you know, with Pavelski leaving the lineup and not returning, they rallied after that. They got together as a group and really played well for the remainder of the hockey game. They probably should have won, but that's exactly what the Minnesota Wild are able to do. They're able to stay in those type of games and find a way to win. But you know, just again, overall, the, I'm going to be talking a lot for this game because there's a lot to talk about and unpack Ooh. here. But the way the Dallas Stars played on the power play as well only took nine seconds total on two power plays to score a goal. A strong execution off the faceoff to win the draw itself and then get set up. Exactly what happened in the Carolina Hurricane game with their two power play goals. Just very, very well True. executed on the power play. Uh, Jason Robertson and Rupe Hintz getting the job done both on the top line. We know what they're capable of. You know, both goaltenders, Jake Ottinger and Philip Gustafson. Philip Gustafson oh. is the real deal. Oh. He is absolutely Hold on. legit at this point. Hold, incredible, Hold incredible what Philip Gustafson was able to uh, do. 51 50, saves? Is 51 that accurate? 51 saves for Gustafson, 45 saves for Ottinger. Wow. So, both goaltenders stood on their head. It could have gone either way. Wow. They were outstanding uh, game Ooh. savers as well in overtime, third period, yep. fourth period. And, yeah, got to show some love to both those goaltenders. Hey, also, uh, Philip Gustafson should be back in there in game two. And I know yeah, oh, they yeah, went 100% he's back in there. Okay, but they said they were going to do tandem, and I think that plan is right out yeah, the window. out because... the window. <laughs> Okay, thank goodness. I was like, all of a sudden here, if they stick to that tandem plan, and that is no disrespect due to one of the best goaltenders to ever do it and a shoe-in Hall of Famer, and I believe the man has three cups. Or wait, two cups. Two cups? How many two How cups. many cups, cups. does Flurry have? Two, two cups. I think it's two, two or three. I, he Actually, he has all three with uh, Pittsburgh, yeah, but he Pittsburgh, was on the yeah. bench for a couple of those. Anyway, Philip Gustafson was at the top of my takeaways for this game steal. 
And the Minnesota Wild are going to need to step up a little bit from Kirill Kaprizov in terms of I'm going to need a little bit more from him. That's just me. That's just how high I am on him. That was my first negative. Because other than that, I don't see any negatives here. And that hit on Dumbo, let's talk about it in a sec. And we're not going to get too much longer on this because we're not a Minnesota Wild podcast as much as Steele wants it to be. And we got big time bets coming up at the end of the episode. Philip Gustafson with a 962 save percentage in game one is immediately now the reason why I think the Minnesota Wild could steal this series away from the Dallas Stars. Mm -hmm. My prediction was Dallas in seven. This was a really, really closely contested game, which I now know after that hit from Dumba is now a for sure fact because these two teams are starting to also really hate each other. So this is where I was also going to affect my big time bets for tonight, Steel, in the rematch in game two. But let's just leave it at that because I know you have a lot to say, but we got a mm-hmm. lot of time to talk about this series. The hit, Dumba, changes the course of the game a little bit. I know Dallas played well after it, but it really did change some momentum there. And I'll say this, dirty, no. Borderline, 100%. It's very close. The puck is a little bit away, Steele. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit late. Is it to the head? I've been hearing. I watched a lot of clips today. Is it to the head? I don't think so. Is it high? I don't think so. Is it late? That's where I might be here for the conversation, but the NHL has ruled. No dirty play. Did he get it? He got a penalty, though, didn't he? Yeah, and that's the thing. I, I agree with you. It is borderline. It's all, it's again, close. It's all subjective. It, it that's is close. Playoffs, it is though, right? It is borderline, but for me, it's not dirty whatsoever. Again, a lot of the argument here is was it was it late? And I don't think it was late. If you watch it at full, you know, at real time, full speed, it's not even a second after he shot the puck. He was he was caught with his head down. And Dumba's one of those guys. He's a smaller guy, but when he when he hits you. He hits you really hard, and you feel it afterwards. Mm. I can show you a highlight reel Mm -hmm. of all the Matt Dumba hits that he's done in open ice in the neutral zone and along the boards as well. But to me, it's a clean hit. He caught him with his head down. It was shoulder to shoulder. The impact of the injury had a lot to do with him falling as hard and as fast as he did. Yes. And and smacking the back of his head off the ice. Agreed fully. That's where the injury comes from. So. Yeah, I was on Twitter all, I all night last night. I yeah, heard, you I heard were you were on people. fire on Twitter last night. I heard night. a lot of people going off about how it was a dirty hit. It was, you know, that's a five minute major. I've seen videos on YouTube uh, this morning as well. I don't know. It's it, that's absolute BS. It's bogus talk right there. That's people who say that and people who think that it's a five minute major clearly don't know enough about hockey. That is just that's real hockey right there. That's a clean hit. And, I and tend the to officials. Agree. The officials got it right, and that's what I love about them able to actually review this now and review five minute uh, five minute majors because yeah. you know the this is this is why it happened when you look back four to five years ago when it happened again on Joe Pavelski against the, yes against exactly the Vegas that Golden Knights. it exactly changed the that. rules because of that hit it changed the rules because of that hit and then it happens against Pavelski again. They, they, they review it, and they, they looked at it for a long time, over five minutes, different angles, and they came to the right conclusion that it was a clean and fair check. He got two minutes for roughing, and actually Max Domi got a 10-minute for continuation for jumping in and suckering, uh, suckering yeah. um, Matt Dumba uh, as well. Yeah, yeah. Before we move on, though, I think what, you know, this is good. I, I, I love the fact that people are noticing this as well. And I think it, it should change for game two, but the officials need to keep an eye on Ryan Suter because the amount of times that he cross-checked Kaprizov or Matt Boldy straight to the ribs behind the play mm. was absurd and zero penalties were called on the play. So to me, mm. what Ryan Suter was doing last or uh, in game one to Kaprizov was a lot dirtier than what Dumba uh, did to uh, what uh, Matt Dumba did to Joe Pavelski. That smack off the ice, I think, is what really did the damage here. Pavelski yes. is likely out for game two. We know how important of a piece he's been for the Dallas Stars over the last two seasons. So mm-hmm. Matt Dumba is a player who plays with edge. We know this. Yes, I would not ever call Matt Dumba a dirty player, though, in my opinion. That's just me. I haven't seen the man do too much dirty stuff on the ice. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm right. I don't know. But I know, Steele, I got a couple of good big-time bets coming up. 
We don't even think we're, we don't have time to get to our brackets today. So that's okay. We'll get to our brackets tomorrow, people, on Thursday's episode, because I need to talk about the Edmonton Oilers' performance in game one, because it goes right into what happens tonight in game two. Take us away to the break, my friend, and we'll come right back with this Edmonton Oilers LA Kings. And big time bets, of course, where the money is made. Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. Your first listen every single day. Don't forget we are free and available on your favorite podcast platform, including YouTube. So hit the subscribe, hit the follow button. We appreciate all the love, all the support you show us every single day. Maybe we'll get to the NHL playoff bracket today if we have enough time. If not, we will leave it for tomorrow. We might have enough time, uh, but we do have to wrap up the episode with big time bets. (laughs) Let's start with the Edmonton Oilers and the LA Kings, though. We got to wrap up game one from Monday night. Yeah, what an upset! What an upset from the LA Kings. Oh, it looks like upset. it was over heading into the third period. I want to hear your take on this. Okay. What are your thoughts on the Oilers uh, letting well, that one slip through their fingers? There's a couple of things here because yes, they let it slip through their fingers, but there's some credit due to the LA Kings, and I want to start with yeah. a little player named Victor Arvidsson because <laughs> once again, Steel. No, once again, this guy is just proving his worth. That pack and pass. For the winner. Just unbelievable. So I just want to throw that out there, number one, because if those guys start to be able to do their thing, just quality NHLers, the Edmonton Oilers need to wake up and wake up fast, and I'll be the first one to admit that I was wrong. Second, Adrian Kempe. Throw some respect on my man's name. (laughs) And no, I'm not just going to go there and say it. Why? His release is absolutely lethal. And the way he shoots the puck... Take a look and run the tape back because now it's starting to really make the difference Mm -hmm. for this LA Kings team. And number three, before I talk about the Edmonton Oilers, the LA Kings got this done without Kevin Fiala and without Gabe Villardi. Yeah, Both guys had a big reason into why the Kings were good this year. So the Edmonton Oilers better wake up and wake up very quickly. And I guess I'll throw it back over to you with this caveat. McDavid needs to be a lot better. Yeah, I know it's one game, but I don't even care about 156 points in the regular season, my guy, if you're going to put up zero when your team needs you the most. And I know the Edmonton Oilers had this game in the bag and they blew it. I don't care. McDavid even comes in with one goal. This see, this game is done. So where was Dry Seidel at the end of that game? Why is he on the bench steal number one? Evan Bouchard <laughs> takes two dumb penalties. Kane takes two dumb penalties and it costs the Edmonton Oilers. They might be in trouble still if they can't yeah. tighten it up. And, and Cody Cece was the one that actually took that really dumb penalty that CC. cost okay. that. Cody, yeah, Cody Cece was the one that uh, took that. How really is he still penalty. in the NHL? Wow. I don't understand. Very dumb penalty. And the Kings execute that power play to perfection for Alex Iafalo in the mm-hmm. slot and just rips it home. I want to highlight the. No, it wasn't Cece. Wasn't it Deherney? No, Cody CC was the one who like fell okay. over himself and he swung okay. his stick back and tried to uh tried to uh, get the puck, but it was a it was a very bad bad attempt from Cody CC. I'm pretty sure it was Cody CC. I'm gonna check it. I'm gonna check it. Check, you... check the box score. Check the stats there. But I want to talk about the goalies real quick. Yeah, yeah. Because, no, hit me with something. Yeah, else. like because this is the first time for both both goaltenders. Well, first time for Jonas Corposalo in three years being in the postseason. Second time in his career being in the postseason, but he battled some nerves to begin with. He pulled it together down the stretch. He came up with some very clutch and big saves uh, in overtime and late in the third period, a 925 uh, 925 save percentage in game one. Outstanding for Jonas Corposalo. Stuart Skinner, I thought he was really good as well. I didn't, I didn't like uh, the LA Kings second goal. I thought it was a very Mm. sloppy play from Evan Mm -hmm. Bouchard. A very quick wrist shot from Adrian Kempe, like you said, yeah. underrated, but sloppy play from Evan sloppy. Bouchard, yes. not getting the uh, yes. not getting the puck. Stuart Skinner, he should. I thought he should have made that save as well. I thought he was a little late uh, with his uh, reaction Fair. time Fair. there. And then again, it just came down to some poor uh, poor mistakes, especially taking some dumb penalties by mm-hmm. Cody CC and Evander Kane, like you mentioned. Exactly what I was saying. It actually was DeHarnay in overtime. Okay. Vincent DeHarnay takes the trip on Lazat, and mm. that caused the power play that they lost the game on. But still, 
this is a team now that has come out in in game one performances of the playoffs just not look good at all and they did this last year against the same la kings team and came back to yep. win the series so there's that but when i've come on the show the last couple of weeks and been so high on the edmonton oilers and <laughs> you know I have Leon Dreisaitl in my playoff pool. I have Evan Bouchard in my playoff pool. So I had a great night points-wise. But yes. just some bad mistakes from Evan Bouchard, some bad penalties from this team. Why isn't Dreisaitl out there at the end of the game? <laughs> just some things that you think are very avoidable, right? That's now when these things will start to be exacerbated by other mistakes and a good team on the other end. Let's go to big time bets. I don't think we have enough for a whole break up, uh, break playoff break off, a bracket breakdown, but maybe we'll <laughs> save that for tomorrow. I'm going to spit these yeah. words out. I promise. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll save the NHL postseason uh, bracket challenge for next episode. So make sure you're tuning in for tomorrow's episode of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. Let's get over to big time bets, rattle these off so we can wrap up this very awesome episode here. First pick of the night. I'm going to take the New York Islanders again on the money line against the Carolina Hurricanes. I thought they were good in game one. I thought they were good enough to win the game mm, or at yeah. least send it to overtime. Sororkin was uh, was unbelievable in the crease as well. I'm going with my gut on this one, and, you know, I'm sticking with my, sticking with my guns. Islanders on the money line versus the Carolina <laughs> Hurricanes. Also okay. take the under five and a half if you want yeah. to parlay them together. It's going to be a low-scoring event yep. uh, all series long. Second pick of the night. I think we're going to see the same, more of the same from this Panthers-Bruins game, but I'm actually going to take the Bruins on the puck line against the Florida Panthers. It's just it's too hard to go into TD Garden on the road, especially in the postseason. And Bergeron's and, probably back. And, and Bergeron's probably back. So I'm going Bruins on the puck line. That's yes, actually sir. my lock of the night. Yes, And sir. Uh, my last pick here. I'm going back to the Oilers on the money line. There's no way they lose both at home. McDavid's going to so, show yeah. up. He's not going to be kept off the score sheet once again. He's going to he's going to at least have a couple of uh, a couple of oh. apples. Oh. Those are my oh. picks. Uh, Bruins puck line is my lock of the night. Steel, I absolutely love everything that you just said. So let me fire off all three very quickly. <laughs> Bruins puck line. This team might not lose a game through the first round. And oh my goodness, I, I'm fine to say I was wrong. But when you have the team riddled with illness and your captain out and you still come out and allow <laughs> one goal. Hey, the Florida Panthers say what you will. They got offense on the blue line. They got some big offensive pieces up front. One goal when your top defensive forward is out and your half your team is sick. We might have to start buying into the narrative with this team being one of the best to ever play, Steel, and I don't want to go there yet, but Bruins, puck line, pick number one, and what you just said. Couple of apples for Connor McDavid. Music to the old headphones, <laughs> baby. McDavid over one and a half points. Love he it. needs Love it. to be all over the score sheet. Yep. This isn't a bold take. You don't need to know hockey to know if this team needs to win McDavid needs two, three, four, five, six points. <laughs> and I think he gets at least a couple tonight. That's my second pick. Lock of the night. You know, I like to tease these totals up just a little bit. Under 6.5 in the New York Islanders Carolina Hurricanes game. That's my lock of the night. You're going to be taking a heavy bit of juice here. You're not going to get a huge odd. But under six, under 6.5 is a per parlay it with three of Steele's picks slap in McDavid take a little five gamer 20 bucks thank us later baby enjoy tonight's games enjoy the games and thank you so much for making the locked on fantasy hockey podcast your first listen every single day make sure you're tuning in the rest of the week of course flip and I will get to our NHL playoff bracket challenge who we have in the Stanley Cup finals and Thursday. who takes it home Thursday episode. Thank you so much again for tuning in for today's episode with Flip and I. Have a great day. Good luck with all your bets out there. And we shall see you back here again tomorrow. Peace.